Next question is from BJ Ben Johnson. While doing a three-day full-body weekly routine, what do you recommend doing on the off days to stimulate muscle growth? I've heard Sal promote trigger sessions. Could you explain what those are and how they help? Yeah, you know, I just posted in my story, I don't know if you guys saw this, um, where I posted the three most impactful books that I read as an early lifter. And so there was Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. That was the first that mm-hmm. showed me all the different exercises. Then there was Mike Menser's Heavy Duty. That was really the first book that got me to question common knowledge in muscle building because it was so just opposite of what I had thought was true or whatever. And then the third book was the one that really got me to understand the value of frequency, the power Mm. of sending a frequent muscle building signal. This book was called Dinosaur Training. Mm -hmm. And in the book, he advocates for daily lifting and daily practice of lifting. This was so opposite from what I had read in Flex Magazine and Bodybuilding Magazines where they said, you know, annihilate the muscle or beat up your muscle and then let it rest and recover. And basically what he said in the book was work out every day, just don't work out hard every day. And that frequency signal will get things to move along. And that's when he really started to look at frequency. Now, later on, I observed the effects of frequent you know, activity on family members and their body parts that were developed. And I've told the story a million times, like my mechanic uncle with the big forearms and all that stuff. And on those off days, do low intensity exercise. Number one, it's going to speed up re- recovery. It doesn't slow down recovery. It doesn't get in the way. It actually speeds it up. And number two, even though it's low intensity, that doesn't mean it's not sending a small muscle building signal. It's not as loud and as big as the full body workout you might have done the day before, but it does do something. And so what a trigger session essentially is, is a 10-minute light pumping session. You're just doing some exercise to get a little bit of a pump, and then you leave it alone. And you could do this a few times a day on the off days, and it makes a tremendous difference in how your body develops. Oh, yeah. And to kind of back that up, like one of my favorite books I'm always uh, talking about is Super Training uh, by Mel Sif. And, they, you know, they go through all these different studies uh, over from, you know, Russia. And one of the things was about the Olympic lifters and how they would lift and uh, really like stay in, in a low to moderate intensity as they would go to do these like really complicated Olympic lifts. And, and they were just, you know, sharpening that that signal of how I lift and go through this movement and trying to, you know, really like master all these little nuances that were involved in, in that process. And so uh, to be able to do that effectively, to, to always do it with intensity, you're going to get in under fatigue and then things are going to get away from you and so it's it's much more effective to just continuously sharpen and work on this like practice and so it's like uh, in terms of trigger sessions it's basically the, the the practiced version of you know doing those exercises before you then get into your workouts well i don't have a good book to reference uh but i do remember reading this study for frequency and when that light bulb first went off for me the problem, though, that I had was I remember realizing like, oh, I need to hit the muscle group more frequently. And the challenge that I had was I still was applying the same mentality that I was before. And so I think that's where I think a lot of people get stuck here, even our some of our listeners, like they they hear of trigger sessions and then we, we talk about frequency. And I got to think that there's a, a large portion of people that probably are applying it the same way that I probably was as a young kid, just thinking more is better. It's, it's a workout. It's right. more workouts. Yeah, exactly. It's more workouts. Of course, if two workouts were good, three would be better, and then four would be better, and five would be better, right? Uh, and the, the thing that took me a while is to really be okay with scaling back uh, the intensity. And it's hard, especially if you've if you've already been trained to like train hard and you want to sweat and you want to burn. Like I, it's probably the number one thing that I have to address in DMs when people are referring to trigger sessions. They're like, you know, how hard should I go and how heavy should I go and how many should I do? And they're, those are the type of questions when it's like, no, don't think of it like that at all. We're literally just trying to pump some blood, practice some movement. You're really trying just to facilitate recovery. I like to talk about it like more like that mm-hmm. than I like to talk about it as increased frequency because increased frequency to so many people just means more workouts. Mm. And think of it more as like what you're trying to do is send blood to that that muscle group that, that's sore. I want to send more blood, more oxygen, more nutrients to there by me doing something really light. It's going to pump fluid into there and speed up the recovery process. So 
think of it less of like a, a standalone workouts that you're doing throughout the day and think of that I'm just trying to send send blood, send signals, send fluids, send nutrients to that area, speed up recovery, and that's what's going to help. And then, yes, of course, the increased frequency of touching that muscle is going to do it. But that, to me, is the big hurdle for people that are learning about trigger sessions is knowing how to separate the difference between a traditional or a foundational workout from what are these things that you guys talk about, trigger sessions, they really are. And that's why we recommend bands. Like bands are so good for this because they're they're easy, they're light, you can take them anywhere, and you really are just trying to pump some fluid and some blood and oxygen into that muscle. Totally. And here's another way to look at it, right? So imagine if you're looking at uh, you're looking at a graph or there's a you're, you're standing in front of a clothesline. Okay, you're looking at a clothesline. Everything below that clothesline means your body is losing muscle. Everything above that clothesline means your body is building muscle. And when you work out, you send a signal that goes above that clothesline. When you're not working out, the signal goes below that clothesline. So now think of the signal as a, as a balloon that's filled with air. So it's not filled with helium, it's filled with air. And so you start out your day and you do a hard, heavy workout. Give that balloon a real hard hit underneath it and it's going to go real high above the clothesline. Now the next day comes around. Well, you, 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 you're not going to be able to recover from another really hard workout, but that's okay because that balloon is still, even though it's floating down slowly, it's still above the clothesline. So now you don't need to hit the hell out of it. You just pop it a little bit. You give it a little pop. Then you wait to the next day, and then it comes down. Uh-oh, it's getting close to the clothesline, but now I'm going to do the hard workout. Pop it real hard again. So essentially what you're doing is you're every single day, either through intense workouts or through light trigger session type workouts, you are maintaining a positive muscle building signal. And the way your body ultimately builds muscle is if the positive signal is outweighs the negative signal because there is no such thing as maintenance in the body. You're always adapting. And when it comes to muscle, it's either building or it's breaking down. Either it doesn't blowing or popping. It doesn't just stay. It doesn't just maintain. So you want to keep that signal popped up uh you know above the clothesline and that means some workouts are hard. Oh, but now I'm limited by re my recovery. That's okay. Now I can do a lighter workout and send a, a, a lower level signal. I don't need to send such a loud one. Then the next day, oh, I'm, I'm more recovered. Now I can send a louder signal. If you approach your workout this way, especially if you're looking for maximum gains, like if that's your goal, if you really want to see what your body can do, do two to three trigger sessions on your off days. It will blow your mind. You have to be consistent doing it just once or one day a week not going to do it. Do it every single day on the off day. Try it for a month. Watch what happens. Write me a DM. I promise you it'll blow your mind.